everybody in the world Hello everyone, welcome back into the GSMC Fantasy Sports Podcast brought to you as always by the GSMC Sports Network. Before we get into our second segment of the day, before, of course, Andre, I will get to your comments in just a second, but I do need to remind you yet again that if you do feel so inclined, please consider making yourselves available to the Super Chat, Super Thanks, and Super Stickers features here on YouTube. You can also donate at gsmcpodcast.net, but if you want to contribute to the show with some immediacy as you're watching, this is the best way. You can press the dollar sign, leave a comment. And it will pop up on my screen and I will read it out loud. It's a great way to contribute and interact. Get your own opinions out there for the show. We appreciate every single one of them that we get. And we'll continue doing it for both my show and other shows across the network. We'll just make the network that much better. And we'll continue to give you guys good content. But without further ado, let's jump right into Andre's comments, first of all. And then our second segment of the day. Andre says, no Micah or d Law too right, referring to the absence of both of those players for the Cowboys in that game against the Lions. And I think that they will be absent. I haven't heard any news to kind of get away from that notion. So that's another worrying thing that the Cowboys are going to have to monitor. And then he suggests, as a Packers fan, he's giving them a very slim chance to beat Detroit this season due to their run defense. And not for nothing... I do feel like the Packers do kind of profile in that way, but they are very opportunistic. So if you know Jared Goff, when he does pass, you know, is a little bit erratic as we saw earlier in the season, then there are chances for the Packers to pick their poison in that game. When they do play them, I think it's going to be a very competitive game. And they're still the two best teams, I would say, in that division. I still have to see a little bit more out of the Vikings to truly convince me that they have staying power. But at the end of the day, I think that they're the two best teams in that division when they step on the football field together. And we'll see it in that game. I wish the Packers the best of luck in that one. It's going to be a good one. But at the end of the day, it's all about how the Lions game plan sets up. But I do want to get into college football a little bit. As, as Andre said, the Lions pass defense is horrendous, and I completely agree with that. As a Seattle fan, I saw that firsthand. But, you know, against, you know, different teams, I feel like they'll find ways to improve. And if they find, you know, a stretch of manageable games, then who knows how, quote-unquote, good they'll look. But it is a good point to point out about the Lions. But I do want to get into college football a little bit. Huge, huge week. In the world of college football, week seven we are in right now. A lot of rivalry games, a lot of heavyweight matchups across different conferences as well. So I just want to keep you updated on all of them. We will be quick in this regard, but I just want to kind of capture the excitement and hype around some certain games. Starting off with one of my favorite games as a Texas fan each year, the Red River Rivalry, Texas-Oklahoma. Texas favored by 15 and a half points now. Sorry about that. The line did move before, a- after I made that graphic. Graphic over under 54.5 money lines. Texas minus 650. OU plus 475. So I can see a hefty margin in the betting odds there. And this should be a good one. I feel like Oklahoma has had Texas's number over the past couple of years. But this feels like a year that the shift in momentum is starting to shift towards Texas. Quentin Ewers confirmed to play in this game. And I feel like for Texas to win this game, they just need to get Quinn Ewers into a rhythm. He's all about being that rhythm quarterback that creates the tempo of the game, controls the football, protects it, and most importantly knows how to put points on the board. On the Oklahoma side of things, I've heard great things about their young true freshman QB, Michael Hawkins Jr., and how poised and calm he is in pressure situations. But this is a different animal, I think. I feel like as one of the first true freshman QBs to start in a game against Texas of this magnitude, especially, it's going to take a huge effort. He knows that his defense is a solid unit and can find ways to limit the big plays that Texas are amenable to. But... At the end of the day, I feel as if poise and calm can only get you so far when you're up against the number one team in the country. Texas is there for a reason. I feel like when we talk about complete team,
teams this year in college football are hard to come by, but teams like Texas, teams like Ohio State are those teams. Oklahoma, I feel, isn't quite at that level yet, at least on the offensive side of the ball. I think their defense can keep them in this game. It's a huge X factor in this game. But in order to cover the spread comfortably, Oklahoma is going to have to find ways to put points on the board and in a hurry before this game gets out of hand for them. So I'm taking Texas personally, but just know that this is a game that's always been competitive in the kind of Steve Sarkeesian, Brent Venables era, no matter what. And so you have to be wary of that. But the next game I want to mention, another big game. Penn State travels across the country to Los Angeles, Southern California, to take on USC. They are five and a half point favorites, though. The over under is 47.5. Penn State minus 195 to win. USC plus 165 at home. This game, to me, feels a lot more even than people would think because. USC is a very opportunistic game. As Andre saying, I'm trying to find some props for the Seattle game. I feel like the best prop for this game that I mentioned is Brock Purdy hitting the over. He's going to take advantage of this weakened Seattle defense, especially that secondary. I think Reek Woolen is the heartbeat of that secondary, and losing him is a huge hit. I just don't think a guy like Trey Brown can fill in his shoes. So taking Brock Purdy's over. I'll try and find it in my notes for you. But I feel like that's the most um, comfortable one, I would say, for this bet. As I believe it was over 249.5. I think he'll comfortably hit that on the Seattle side of things. I would say JSN hitting the under. He hasn't really been, quote-unquote, as impressive as I thought. He has had some nice plays here and there. But he's not comprehensively proving himself to be a wide receiver two or supplanting Tyler Lockett for that wide receiver two position. So take the under there. As the under said, do you think they shut down DK? What was questionable? Not sure of his status. Also, I think Kufango will be out as well. And that's a big impact on the 49ers secondary. But overall, I feel like DK is an unusual player because he is perhaps their, their best route runner as he also says, can you give me four player props you like for tonight? I say, Brock Purdy over, Geno Smith over, let's say DK Metcalf over, and JSN under. He says, I have a payoff booster on underdog. Good luck to you, my man. In terms of DK, I just feel like it's going to be a matter of how they utilize him, right? Whether or not they trust the run game more in this one, or whether or not they, you know, Hit the pass game very often. But thank you for your comments, my man. Good luck to you and your betting exploits for tonight's game. It should be a good one. For college football, though, this was a classic game a couple of years ago between Penn State and USC, where USC, at the Rose Bowl, no less, hit a game-winning field goal in the era of Sam Tarnold and Saquon, Bar Saquon Barkley, if you remember that. But this feels like a new horizon for both of these teams. For Penn State, they're going to be Offense, the name of the game going forward. Drew Aller has been looking more explosive this season, incorporating so many different weapons in this offense. And then the USC side of things, I feel as if they are a team that can take opportunities to make some defensive plays that can be the difference in this game. And Andre says, do you like Debo and Ayuk tonight? I do, but it's going to be difficult to see which one is better. I feel like Debo has the propensity to have the bigger plays in this game, whereas Ayuk is going to be more of an X factor in terms of extending drives. But I feel like Debo is just someone who has been a Seahawk killer throughout his career. We have, have no ways to stop him no matter who our DC or head coach has been. And he just is a game wrecker on that side of the football when he's healthy for San Fran, whereas Ayuk, I feel like it's going to be important, but not in a way where he fully impacts the game as much as a Debo Samuel can. But looking at you know this Penn State USC game, I don't necessarily think it will hold much stock in the Big Ten race because both of these teams are not in the most advantageous positions going forward. Penn State still has Michigan and Ohio State to face. USC has some tough games. But overall, this game is going to be about offense versus defense. That being said, 
I do think USC covers the spread. It's going to be a close game, but I do think Penn State pulls this one out. Ohio State, Oregon, another big game, another big conference game with that. OSU favored by three and a half over under 51.5. OSU minus 135. Oregon plus 115. I feel like this game will come down to the fact that Ohio State is just a more balanced team. Their defense, perhaps the best in the entire country. Their offense, opportunistic as always. Jeremiah Smith looks like an absolute freak out there. Emeka Abuka still timely as Andre shouts out the Ducks. On the Ducks side of things, they have looked to be improved. Their O-line, as Andre said, Dylan Gabriel's moment of truth as well. I love Dylan Gabriel. Their O-line has really improved around him. It's going to be all about, you know, sustaining drives, playing with stay free football, and who knows how this game will turn out. I'm still giving Oregon the benefit of the doubt, even with their little trip-ups along the way. They are still undefeated, and on any given Saturday in college football, anything can happen, and we've seen it throughout this season. I, for the Ohio State side of things, I just think they need to just play their brand of football. If they do, it's going to be tough for Oregon. But Oregon has, has been in these moments before. They know from their Pac-12 experience how it is to try and beat top teams. Overall, I think they're going to cover, but I still think Ohio State will win this game. But that's just my opinion. I think that you know it could go either way. But I feel like Ohio State just looks like a more well-balanced, well-rounded team at this point. And the last one I have in my graphic, a huge Big 12 show, and I'm bigger than people think. Kansas State going up against Colorado in Boulder. Six-point favorites. 56.5 over under. Colorado State plus 190. K-State minus 225. And this could be the moment where Travis Hunter firmly plans himself in the Heisman race. Uh, going up against a very dynamic quarterback in Avery Johnson who's proven he can have big games in him. I feel like this Big 12 matchup will show us, as under says Jason, under 48 yards, that is exactly the bet that I would take because I feel like he's not someone who can impact the game and get over 100 yards or even 70 yards, a way that Seattle might even need him to in the future. As Avery, as under said, bro, Avery Johnson's going to go and see this game. That's my thing. It's going to be Who's going to be more impressive, Avery Johnson or Travis Hunter? Because I love Avery Johnson. He's one of my favorite quarterbacks in the entire nation. But Travis Hunter, you know, is just a completely game-altering player. He's just someone who can take over any game. And if you want me to be honest with you, this could be a game of two shocking Heisman hopefuls. I'm saying that Avery Johnson is that good. But it's going to come down to, you know, who can make the bigger plays. Is the stage too big for Avery? Or will Travis Hunter have a slip-up in his Heisman uh, race? We'll have to see, but thank you all for tuning in to my second segment. That will just about do it for it. Coming up for my third one, I conclude my positional rankings with the best defense and special units to, special teams units to roster for Week 6 in the NFL. We'll be right back after this short break to talk about that. Looking for your daily fix of sports talk without having to pay? 